Welcome back to Rounds Hour Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Today is Science Project Day. I'm gonna make my first attempt at doing the copycad kit from Caswell, the zinc plate and black chromate, some bolts and nuts and stuff that I'm gonna use for my motor rebuild. I did a quick little intro video on that if you wanna um, watch that, it's up here. And I've got an instruction book that comes with it. This thing is pretty massive. It's about 30, uh, 30 bucks if you wanna buy it separately. And then if you go ahead and buy the kit, they'll apply that $30 to the kit. But there's a whole bunch of proprietary information in here. Even if you don't go with their kit, it may be beneficial to you to, uh, to use it as like a cheat sheet. And uh, just about everything that they make is covered in here, not just this copycat stuff. So if you, uh, you know, wanna do some chrome plating or anodizing or all sorts of stuff, there's, there's all sorts of information in here. But the copycat and the zinc plating is what we're gonna concentrate on. So we've gotta mix all the chemicals, get all, it's all distilled water, it's all gotta be, some of it's gotta be heated, all sorts of, uh, it's a pretty, I wouldn't say strict requirements, but, but good, good requirements to make sure that this stuff goes right the first time. So we'll give it a shot here, see if I can't uh, get some success with this. And I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Mike for Mike's Restorations, who restored a 1967 Porsche 911. Gorgeous car, did a lot of work himself. Some of the stuff that he did was this using this copycat kit, and that's kind of what uh, motivated me to go ahead and use this device, uh, sending this stuff out in, in little itty bitty batches and, and spending probably more money in the long run. So, thanks again for watching. Let's get it sorted. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> First thing we're gonna prep here is the degreaser. Like I showed you, I got the um, a little crock pot in the background there that I picked up from Goodwill for just a couple bucks. And I've got a uh, scale here, and I picked up some cheapo measuring cups and, and stuff like that from Walmart. Just obviously I don't wanna use the stuff out of my kitchen. So this degreaser works, at, uh, works best at 190 degrees, it says, and you gotta heat at least to 160 degrees. So I preheated the water a little bit with a uh, immersion bucket heater that I have that I'll show you. I did a quick little video on that because it's uh, it's not cheap, but it's a nice one. And this is one pound for two gallons. It's pretty small crock pot, so I only have about a half a gallon in there. So I'm only gonna make up about four ounces. So we'll go ahead and cut that bag open, get four ounces measured in this cup here, pour it in there and get it stirred up. Three point nine nine ounces. That's probably close enough. All right. Let me get something to stir with, and then get this degreaser powder bagged up so I don't lose any, make a mess. So while we wait for the degreaser to get up the temperature, the next up is going to be to mix the actual zinc solution itself. So I have a three gallon kit, like I mentioned in my intro video. So everything, the instructions in the in the uh, manual are going to be doubled. So we're going to put three gallons of water in this bucket. We're gonna add the two concentrates. You have a liquid part here, and you have a powder part, and I got two of each of these because it's a three gallon kit. And then we've got a little bit of brightener here, and the brightener, you get eight ounces here, and it only takes um, a teaspoon. So this stuff is gonna last for absolutely ever, which is good. So we're gonna go ahead and dump three gallons of distilled water in here. If I didn't make that point before, everything's distilled water here. It's gotta be pretty clean. You know, not antiseptically so, I don't think, but but cleanliness next to guideliness here with this stuff. So we're gonna dump this water in. These are three gallon buckets, by the way. Or excuse me, three and a half gallon buckets. All right, so there's the water. Now we want 13 ounces of part A concentrate. So each one of these, like I said, is good for a, uh, a gallon and a half. So we'll put both of these in. And this looks like uh, a nasty little milk jug. And it does, uh, it was settling out a little bit. So just make sure that you stir this up. And then on the top here, it says the same thing, makes 13 ounces of part A with 36 weight ounces of copycat zinc part B and a gallon and a half of distilled water refer to manual. So that's the part B here is the powder. This is the part A. So we'll go ahead and get this electrical tape off here. Get this stuff poured in. All right, now the powder. Both of these go all in. All 
All right, and that bucket's uh, pretty full. All right, stuff's probably going to take a little while to come to uh, dissolve, but next up is going to be the brightener. All right, and as I mentioned, this takes very little. It's only a teaspoon. All right, spilled a little bit of it there. I don't think that really matters. As part of the CAD plating process here, it uh, helps to have stuff warmed up. The zinc plating uh, solution itself works 80, 90 degrees or so, give or take 100 degrees. So what I've got here is a submersible bucket heater that I picked up from Amazon. And this is a, it looks like it's a farm, farming equipment one. It, it is made in the USA, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't cheap. It's about 50 bucks. So this thing is totally submersible. Gonna put it in the bottom of the bucket here and plug it in and see if it, uh, see how well it does. It tells you it, it maintains about 110 degrees by itself. And right now this water is probably about 45, 50 degrees or so. It's only about 45 in the barn now because it's, you know, fall and getting colder. But I wouldn't obviously be able to do this without heating this water. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy up, put it in there, plug it in. And uh, I got a little, a little uh, heat gun infrared thermometer here, which is telling me right now that this side of this bucket is 48 and a half degrees. And it's uh, about the same if I point it at the water. So we'll take it off the side of the bucket. We'll go ahead, we'll get this heater opened up. And it's uh, designed to fit a five gallon bucket. So it doesn't look like it's that huge. And though this bucket's only three and a half gallons, it's got the, uh, got the base footprint size of a five gallon. So that makes it convenient there. So there's your bucket, it's got little legs on it and it's all sealed and all that kind of stuff. So that'll just kind of sit suspend it off the side of the bucket so you don't go melt in the bucket itself. And then I assume that it's, uh, it is regulated, self-regulating, so I don't have to worry about that. Look at the directions real quick, make sure there's nothing weird in here and I don't wanna hurt myself. All right, nothing, uh, nothing in here to scare me. It does tells you not to even plug it in until it's uh, fully submerged and all that kind of stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop it in here. It is designed for outdoor use, so you don't, uh, you know, it's built, uh, built like a tank. All right, so that's plugged in. So we'll uh, let this go. I'll check it every uh, several minutes here. I have no idea how long it's going to take to warm up. Thousand watts, so should shouldn't I wouldn't imagine it'll take too long. So we'll come back here and I'll I'll start a timer, and we'll come back here and I'll let you know the time and the temperature. So it's been just about five minutes, and I can see little bubbles collected on the side of the heater. So it's definitely uh, gas is coming out of solution there. So it's definitely heating up. Shoot it in there, and I've got uh, 62 and a half degrees. So in five minutes. I uh, heated up, you know, 20 degrees or so, a little bit less. So yeah, so I think this is gonna work just fine. So I'm just gonna let it go now and see how long it takes to uh, get up to where it's gonna, you know, where it's gonna level out. There's no indication on this, there's no light or anything like that. So you don't really know when it's on or when it's off other than maybe that the lights plugged on the same circuit might might uh, dim a little bit, but but we'll let this go and uh, and see how it works. But uh, but so far, looking pretty good. So it's been ready at about 20 minutes, and we're looking at 97 degrees or so on the inside of the bucket, about 85 on the outside. So it definitely, it definitely warms stuff up, so I'm happy with that. My only concern, and I didn't really consider it before I bought it, though I think I'm gonna run into this no matter what I use, is any of the uh, solution that goes in there, the zinc plating solution, that's gonna have any adverse effects on the body of this thing, but I don't think so. It uh, looks like it's aluminum, so it's, you know, it's all metal. There's no plastic in here except for the cord. And I, I know the cords are going to be fine. So yeah, so I'm happy with that. Seems to work pretty well. Heats it up relatively quickly. So I don't have to wait all day for that to happen. Like I would if uh, maybe with some other solutions. So, so far, this looks like it's going to work out for me. We'll see as I go though. All right, next up is what we're going to do is we're going to add the heater. So we're going to get this immersed and then plug it in and get this to start heating up. Hopefully that'll help with the um the dissolving of all this stuff oh actually i missed the spot here first it says to, once you get all the stuff in there to mark the liquid level with a permanent marker so that you can refer to it later so i'm going to pull this back out because that'll displace some of that water and you want to unplug it when you do that so you don't burn it out all right so actually my level is right even 
conveniently enough with this ridge here. So we'll mark that as full. And then we're also gonna write on here, zinc solution, just so there's no question. All right, so there's that guy, that'll heat up. The other thing that we have is the air pump that this comes with. And supposedly these things are not real great quality, so we'll see here, but it tells you to put it in there. Just a, just a little aquarium air pump. So I got the heater in there, heater, heating, and the pump in there kind of sort of pumping. You can hear some rude noises, I think. Doesn't seem to be moving anything right now. I don't know if it needs to get a prime or, or what, so hopefully that figures itself out. But there's still a good amount of powder in the bottom, and I, I just I think as it heats up, that's going to dissolve and with the agitation. So I'm just going to kind of let this go for a little while, cover it to try to retain some of that heat. And we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be worrying about the anodes and getting them situated and making the bar that I'm going to hang everything from. As annoying as it is, I guess that's the sound that pump's going to make, at least until it quits. Next up, we got to set up the zinc anodes. So you got two strips of zinc that go with this. Now what the instructions tell you is to make like a quarter inch cut up one side until you get right close to the top and not quite. And then you can use that strip as kind of a hinge or a hanger, I mean, to, to hang the two anodes. And I also have to connect them electrically. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the strips now. We'll get them situated in there as far as placement goes and there's some recommendations for that. And once I get the strips cut in and get them hung, I'll, I'll show you and explain. All right, gonna hang the anodes now. I've got those strips cut. Just be careful you don't cut yourself, at least for my, uh, my metal shears are not the best. So we'll just bend this over, kind of make a hinge out of it. Keep saying hinge, make a hanger out of it. Bend it to conform to the tank a little bit. And we'll do the other one. And I'm gonna hang them so I've got the majority of the plate fully submerged. All right, so those are in there. You can see the steam coming off. So the next up now is to connect these up electrically, both to each other and to my power supply. So I'm gonna have to do that here and then we should be pretty close to giving, uh, getting the, the ball rolling here and giving it the first shot. Oh, the, uh, the copper bar that's gonna hang over top of here, all I did was essentially flatten one side and just clean it up real good. And, and this will be what the parts hang off of. And it'll just kind of sit like there and the parts will hang down into the, into the, um, into the solution there. There is the first batch of bolts that I'm gonna be zinc plating. Got uh, a stud in there, I'm not quite sure, I don't remember what the stud's from, but it was in that bag and I'm pretty sure I kept them all together. So we'll go ahead and get these cleaned up on the bench grinder and just get the rust off of them. I'm not gonna show you that, that's gonna be pretty boring. And then we'll uh, get them in the degreaser and while they are degreasing, we're gonna go ahead and calculate how much current and all that kind of stuff that I need to, uh, to make this stuff work. The solution over here is still solutionating. The uh, zinc anodes are in there and, and uh, pickling a little bit. I don't have current hooked up to anything yet, but uh, the pump seems to be holding on so far and the, uh, the heater is working just fine. It's about 110 degrees or so, which is just about perfect. And the degreaser is up to about 150, which is also just about perfect. So we're moving along. Got the bolts all cleaned up. They're not, I haven't degreased them yet. Caswell's website, there's a calculator for calculating surface area. And uh, specifically, there's a, there's a bolt calculator in there. So each one of these bolts and, and the surface area is what, is going to determine how much current I need to use. The surface area, each bolt's about 1.7 square inches and each lock washer is only about two tenths of a square inch. So we're gonna go ahead and dump that in and figure out how much current I need. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll get all this stuff into the degreaser and only takes about five minutes. We'll let that degrease and then we're gonna use some muriatic acid to pickle it. And then hopefully we'll be ready to go in and go ahead and start the process of actually zinc plating. Got all the lock washers here wired up on copper wire. Uh, I'm using uh, 10 gauge, or excuse me, 20 gauge. It recommends uh, 10 or 12, so probably in the future I'll go with a little bit heavier. But don't underestimate how long this takes. So not, uh, you know, obviously we're not rushing this, but that, that took uh, more time than I thought it would or that I would appreciate it would. So now I'm going to go ahead and dip these into the degreaser for five minutes. As far as the anodes go, and I had mentioned that you have to short them together. If you can see this red wire here, just goes from this hang uh, lever, hinge, hanger, 
keep messing that up to the other side. It's just connected up electrically. So now they're shorted. I did take a uh, resistance measurements to make sure. Pump started making funny noises. So I unplugged it for a little bit. I think it just lost its prime, but now we'll go ahead and get these in the degreaser. Like I said, five minutes, get them out, get them rinsed, and then we'll pickle them for a little bit in some muriatic acid. I got to mix that up and then it'll be ready to go into the, uh, the plating process. Five minutes on the degreaser. Muriatic acid here, about 31% uh, hydrochloric acid. That's what I'm going to use to acid etch. This stuff is, is horrible, horrible stuff. I'm going to do this outside. I'm not going to uh, mess with it in here at all. Uh, I got a glass bowl. I'm going to use three cups of water and one cup of muriatic acid. And after it comes out of the degreaser, the flat washers, get them in the lock washers, get them in there and just etch them for no more than a couple minutes and then pull them back out in between all these steps, spraying down with the um, distilled water. And then once I'm done with that, I've got like a soja, I've got them all wired up. I'll be ready to go. I figured out my amperage and I'm only looking at about a half an amp for all 18 washers. So it's two tenths of a square inch per lock washer. You multiply that by 0.14 and then you multiply that by the quantity and I get it about a half an amp. So I'll set my power supply up here for about a half an amp, get that wired in. I'm gonna let start that going. I think just to kind of get, um, let it start. And then while I'm doing this, I'm gonna do all this off camera, like I said, cause it's outside and I'm not gonna mess around. And then we'll come in and show you getting this stuff into the zinc plating. So hopefully we're getting there. Got the washers cleaned and etched here. So now we're gonna go ahead and hang them in the plating solution. This is about a 20 minute evolution here. So the plating process should be going. Notice the power supply here. It's only about 0.32 volts, but it's about a half an amp. So I got it set on a constant current and about a half an amp based on the calculations that I told you. So the positive when you're plating always goes to the zinc plates or the anodes. And the negative goes to the copper bar. You can see that here. And when I first did it and just had that connected and nothing inside the solution, I didn't get any current. Well, as soon as I hung the first set of washers on the current came up to about a half an amp so it's definitely showing me that i've got some activity in there so we're going to go ahead and set this for about set the timer for about 10 minutes then we'll pick them up kind of move them around a little bit and shake them uh, very gently just to make sure that i've got coverage everywhere and to to try to move them off the wire so the wire doesn't kind of shadow some of the zinc and then we'll go for the other 10 minutes pull them out and rinse them see how it looks been 10 minutes you can hear the pump i think not liking life right now so we're going to go ahead and pick these up oh definitely uh definitely plating but i've got uh, i've got some issues where there's no plate going down at all my guess is probably my electrical continuity here is uh, pretty poor because i didn't wrap that wire around enough So yeah, this is definitely, definitely going to need to do this one again, but we'll go for the other 10 minutes and uh, see what I, see where it ends up. All right. It's been 10 minutes and turn the pump off. Go ahead and unplug the heater because that's all I'm going to do for today. I'll pull these out. Take a look. Get them rinsed. Here, let me get them all rinsed and I'll come back and show you the, uh, the results, which aren't great, but it's a learning process. All right, I'll show you some of these on the close up here. It's, it's not horrible. I'm, I'm, I'm not disappointed for my first try, but there are some, like this one down here. There, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. Probably not very well, but if you can tell, that's kind of still dark colored, whereas this one's the lighter with the zinc. So for whatever reason, that one did not plate. And I got a couple more like that. So I think uh, reading the, the manual that talks about troubleshooting, probably inadequate cleaning is going to be my problem. One of the nice things about this is you put it in a little muriatic acid bath and you wipe all that zinc back off and you can try it again. So that's what we'll be looking at. 
do some more studying. Probably a better way to wrap these things, maybe. I'll get some thicker wire. I'm also not real crazy about my electrical connection between my two plates. So I'm going to try to do uh, alligator clips or something that'll make that a little bit more secure and able to carry. You know, right now it's a half an amp, but as I move up to do the bolts, I'm looking at one or two amps. I'm going to want to be able to carry more current than that. And I want that a good solid electrical connection. So not, not too uh, disappointed all in all for the first try, but uh, obviously some lessons learned here to get them as good as they need to be to go back on the car. But that's uh, all I've got. So thanks for watching. More to follow. And we'll, we'll keep trying this until I get it uh, nailed down. Thanks again. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.